Joining us live here on the News Hour from Nairobi is the Deputy President of Kenya, William Ruto. Mr. Ruto, welcome to Al Jazeera. How can you and Uhura Kenyatta possibly believe that this election was actually free and fair? For the record, um, we have defeated Raira Odinga three times in five years. Every time we defeated him, we defeated him with a bigger margin. And he has been trying to use extra constitutional means to get into government, and that we have refused. Mr. Ruto, because let me interrupt you there for a second, sir. Allow me to interrupt you just for one minute. Is, that is not quite an answer to my question. I was asking you, how can you say this election was free and fair? Twelve million people chose to or felt they could not vote. Election officials, election observers, stayed in their hotels. We saw riots, looting, arson. We saw civilians being killed. Um, for the record again, uh, contrary to what you have said, on the 8th of August, uh, 15 million, 78% 78, 78 of Kenyans stand up to vote. In this election, 40% of Kenyans have turned up to vote. It was the intention of the opposition to, that no Kenyan showed up to vote. To their dismay, 7.6 million Kenyans woke up early and went to vote. But the even if all those and, people, and even again, if all those people had decided to polling, vote, allow me to interrupt you again, sir. Even if all those people had Kenya. decided to vote and they had gone to the polling booths, they could not have voted because election officials put in place by the Electoral Commission I am, were I not am there. The materials, you, the materials to vote to you, were not on location. I am talking to you, if you have the correct information about this location, of 7.6 million people who actually voted. I am not talking about those who did not manage to vote. There is 9% of Kenyans, about 1.8 million, who did not vote. And those people who did not vote, they didn't manage to vote because of violence. Violence that is sponsored by Mr. Odinga in his region. In fact, he organized militia that stopped citizens from accessing polling stations. He organized militia to stop IEBC officials, electoral material, from getting to polling stations, except for two uh, constituencies where election material got to the polling stations and citizens voted. Okay. In, about 3, in, a country, in a country where the Mr. population Odinga is 19.6 million, from let me finish. In a country but, where the population is 19.6 million, finally, should, should you not, can I suggest to you, be actually talking about the 12 million people who did not vote as opposed to the 7.2 million people who did vote? The correct statistic is when all the candidates were there on the 8th of August, 15 million Kenyans voted. In this election, 7.6 million Kenyans voted. Those who did not vote were asked to boycott the election by the opposition. It is a choice that citizens make. In Kenya, it is, no, it is not mandatory for anybody to vote. It is a choice that you make. You choose to vote or you choose not to vote. What we are against is Mr. Odinga's use of militia and violence to stop citizens from exercising their democratic constitutional right. And he succeeded in a very small section of Kenya. That is only 9% of Kenya. He managed to uh, stop citizens from voting. 12 million, people, is, 12 million people, sir, not casting a vote is not a small percentage of the country. And you also have a bigger problem here, surely. Before this rerun of the presidential election, the head, the chief of your electoral commission said he was unsure in his heart whether the rerun would be free and fair. And he could not possibly have predicted the scenes of near riots that we saw on the streets. We carried those pictures live on this channel. 
for your information, the same gentleman you're talking about, as I talk to you in this studio now, is presiding over the conclusion of the election results at the BOMAC at the National Tallinn Center. He subsequently had a meeting with the opposition leader. He subsequently had a meeting with the president and myself. And he sub subsequently um, satisfied himself that all security arrangements were in place in 90% of the country, in fact, in the whole country, except in the areas that Mr. Odinga managed to sponsor militia that stopped election officials from uh, accessing polling stations and allowing citizens to vote. Arguably, Mr. Odinga simply doesn't have the resources to pull off what you're talking about, but I do want to move our discussion on to another couple of points. You have a bigger issue here, or you have two bigger issues, can I suggest to you? One, you cannot possibly sustain, Mr. Kenyatta cannot possibly sustain something that may yet be to come that may chime with what happened in the aftermath of 2008, point number one. Point number two is this, you have a bigger issue here which is identity politics within Kenya. You have a sizable percentage of your population who feel disadvantaged. Why? Because they are disadvantaged and no politician is getting to them. For your information, the Kenyan constitution ensures, makes it mandatory for every part of Kenya to be included in the management of the affairs of the country. Our constitution provides for a devolved system of government. It is no longer possible to marginalize any part of Kenya anymore. By constitution, resources, decision making, is, uh, is, 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 uh, gets to every corner of Kenya, every region of Kenya. It is no longer possible for anybody to uh, say that any part of Kenya can be marginalized, number one. Number two, we have learned our lessons. The events of 2008, 2007, where we almost lost the country. We are not fools. It is only fools who learn from their mistakes. The events of 2008, 2000, uh, 2007, 2007, uh, 2008 will never happen again in Kenya. Okay, one last point. You seem to basically be saying that Kenya and Kenyans have to yep. lean into the discomfort of this. Arguably that will never work, but we'll go with that as a central assumption. Off the back of that, we've got on tape Ryla Odinga saying he is prepared to talk, presumably within a parameter of another election happening within three months, 90 days-ish. What is Mr Kenyatta's central message to Ryla Odinga? Will they come together and talk to each other or negotiate through something like the Supreme Court again or the Electoral Commission again? Our, our statement and our position to our friend Mr. Odinga is that Kenya is a constitutional democracy. And every imaginable situation has been provided for by the Constitution. Whatever he is alleging about an election, I don't know, in 90 days, he's nowhere in the Constitution. And no one person, however important they think they are, however popular they think they are, can change the provisions of the Constitution. Kenya is not the animal farm where there are some that are more equal than others. All of us, the President included, are subject to the Constitution. The Constitution provides that there will be a rerun within 60 days. That is what happened on the 26th Thursday last week. And Kenya will move on from there. There will be no election in 90 days. There will be no discussion on matters to do with election. We will have dialogue with Mr. Odinga on other matters, not matters that have been settled by the people of Kenya in their supreme will in a ballot. We'll have to wait and see what those other matters might be. William Ruto, Deputy President of Kenya, many thanks. Thank you very much, my friend.